Is delaying your old age security the right decision for you? In this video, we're gonna cover off delaying OAS, the numbers behind it, and I'm gonna share my software and actually go through an illustration with all of you to show you the effects of deferring both CPP and OAS and see which one makes more sense and if delaying the old age security makes any sense for you as you hit retirement. So let's jump into Snap Projections, which is a software that we use here at Parallel Wealth. Um, what we're looking at here is the assets for Dave and Ruth YouTube. Now, Dave and Ruth YouTube have uh, an RSP. So Dave has 262,500 in the RSP and 52,500 in the TFSA. Ruth, we put at the same thing, same amount of value in both the RSP and TFSA to keep it simple. Now, one thing to note here is in the government benefits, we have defaulted both their CPP to the national average and also old age security at 100%. These clients have been in Canada for over 40 years. So that's the same for both of them, both Ruth. And if I go over to Dave, you'll see 56.06% as well. So we wanted to keep these averages the same. Now, Dave and Ruth are both 58 years old. They have a couple more years working. So you can see we have two years of employment income. They're putting a bit of money into an RSP the next couple of years, as well as into the TFSA. We set it up the exact same thing for Ruth. So we just kind of mimicked uh, basically husband and wife here. Now, what we want to look at is total income. So when they hit 60, how much income will they have? Now, you can see here for Ruth, we've left both CPP and OAS at age 65. And we've done the same for Dave. So I want to see if we take both at 65, again, I'm not going to look at CPP at 60 in this video. What does this look like? So if we take CPP at 65 for both of them and we look at what's their total income, I can hit here, recommendations. And after spending uh, or sustainable spending number, $57,676. So again, just over $57,000 that's after tax and adjusted for inflation. So that's our starting point. That is taking both CPP and OAS at 65. Now I wanna look at what if we delay CPP? How much is that going to give us more if we delay CPP and keep OAS at 65? So let's jump into age 70 for CPP. So I'm just gonna go in here and change both Dave and Ruth to age 70. Again, this is a process that you should be going through with your financial planner to see does this make the most sense for me? So all I've done is change, hey, let's defer CPP. I haven't looked at the RSP meltdown and other things that will create a bit more income and tax efficiency. I just wanna look at the raw income. Um, you'll see here, if we look at a combined view, you'll look, see that CPP starting at 70 now, OAS still at 65, and let's hit sustainability spending. So if I click on this, what the program does is says, okay, based on the parameters you've now reset, what is going to be the after-tax inflation adjusted income? Now you can see here, it jumps to $59,610, which is a $1,900 increase per year, every year adjusted for inflation. That's a lot of money. So right there you can say, okay, well, CPP is giving me almost $2,000 a year, every single year. Now, a lot of you will say, yeah, but Adam, delaying CPP, if I die early, I didn't get all my money. Okay, we're using statistics here. Statistically, delaying your CPP until age 70 is going to make the most sense for you. And in this case, for this client, and again, Every one of you watching this video, it's gonna be a little bit different, but I can say that 99% of the time, deferring your CPP, 68, 69, 70, is going to give you more money in your pocket after tax. If you're not looking to put more money in your pocket in retirement, I'm not sure what else you're looking to do. So definitely aim at CPP or look at CPP to increase your income. So again, here, we're looking at an increase of about $2,000, which is quite substantial. So again, that runs all the way down until the client, we run it to 95 in this one. Again, if we ran it to 90, it's still the same thing. It's still an increase in payment. Now, the third piece of the puzzle here is the old age security. So again, let's just bump the old age security to 70 for both of them as well. We're leaving CPP at 70. So we're looking at what if they deferred both CPP and OAS? And again, I'm gonna talk about the other factors that come into play when looking at deferring both CPP and OAS or one or the other, but things you need to consider outside of just more income. So I'm gonna go combine view. And again, I'm gonna do the same thing here. Hit recommendation, sustainability spending, and let's see how much more, if any, this client's going to get. As we run the numbers here, again, a bump of $741. So it's now we're, you know, we started at about 57,000. We're now worth $60,000. We've given them about $3,000, just shy of $3,000 every single year right through their retirement. So obviously that makes a lot of sense. So in this case, the client would get a lot more money deferring 
here's the thing I want to talk about. If we look at the right hand column here, these total capital assets, these are the savings that the client has. Now, one thing I look at here is, okay, by age 62, their TFSA is depleted, it's gone. The only account they have is an RRSP. And they basically have from age 62 all the way to 70 with their only income coming in from their RRSP. Now, that's a bit of a concern to me because if they have an emergency, if they have something come up and they need a bit of money, they're taking it from their registered accounts. That's not always the best thing in retirement. You don't wanna to have to draw out a retirement. A, it hurts your income ability down the road, but B, you're paying tax on every dollar you get. So typically in a case like this, I'd scale back and say, okay, A, do you need $60,000 a year? Like, is that on the high end? Maybe we can scale that back a bit to 55, 57, leave a bit more for down the road, emergency, that kind of stuff. Um, typically, I do the opposite though, right? We want to do a laddered income. Instead of 60,000 a year, we want to give 65, then 60, then 55, something like that. So if I'm going to give you more income early, we're going to run out of that TFSA money even earlier yet. So a couple of recommendations I would make for this client. If we jump back into the software here, I'll kind of walk through the conversation I would typically have with a client. And hopefully this gives you some mindset for how to think about your retirement plan and questions you should be asking your financial advisor. So number one, I'll go back and say, look, the next couple years, you're saving both into your RRSP and TFSA. And while the RRSP is giving you a nice tax break, you're getting 28 cents back on the dollar based on the marginal tax rate. It might make sense for both of them to put that $10,000 into their TFSA. So I've jumped in here and now looked at, okay, what about if we avoid the RSP over the next few years, do TFSA, you can see 11,500 in the TFSA. I've done this for both David and Ruth. And if I go back again, the TFSA was running out at 62. Now we can see, okay, it's bumping into 63, but we still have that shortfall from 63 to 70. There's no flexibility in cash flow. So I wanna look at how do we avoid that? The next thing I would look at before kind of bumping away as back to 65, is the RSP meltdown. And I won't go into this in detail in this video, but I wanna show you the impact and, and why we do this, other than putting more money back in your pocket, less than to CRAs, um, cash flow, cash flow, cash flow, cash flow. It's very important, here's why. So if we jump back into the software here, the one change I've made now, so again, we had a cash flow issue. We were running out of TFSA money a bit early. So what I did is what we call the RRSP meltdown. And in this case for Dave and Ruth, I just ran a flat $30,000. Now again, I haven't like detailed in on the tax planning here. I'm just looking at kind of cash flow. Um, obviously when you build a plan, you wanna look at your average tax rate a bit closer, but I've just kind of pulled out $30,000 a year out of his RSP and then let the TFSA do its thing. I've done the same for Ruth. So Ruth also has $30,000 per year uh, until uh, from retirement age 60 to 69. So basically from retirement until when they start CPP and OAS, pulling out $30,000. And you can see here now, when I ran the illustration, the TFSA, we're staying at about $100,000. So if they have that emergency, that money is going to be there for them to pull out on a tax-free basis. Now, because I've done this, if I actually hit recommendation, let's see if it's actually gonna give them more or less money too. It should give them a bit more. Typically the RSP meltdown, will put more after tax money in your pocket. Yeah, in this case, it gave an extra $300 a month. So again, a bit of a bump. Now, I will say this, we will typically run the old age security back up to 65. And if I do this for the client, I'll do it on the fly here. Typically it's a cash flow thing. So yes, you're gonna get a little bit more if you defer CPP, um, or if you de defer your old age security, but do you have enough cash flow? And, and we do find for a lot of our clients, cash flow is an issue if we don't take the CPP or uh, OAS, sorry, at 65. So look at taking the old age security at 65. If I go back here and run it, you'll just see it's a better cash flow. Instead of about 100,000 in the TFSA, you know, we're now at 150 and growing. It's a bit of a better cash flow. Let me see what it does for cash flow uh, income wise uh, through retirement. It'll probably drop it a little bit here, but it's probably not substantial. Well, 700, so it brings us back to that kind of original. So there's a decision you have to make. Is deferring your OAS worth it? Now CPP, yes, it makes sense. It, it gives you a bigger bump. Old age security. So things you wanna look at are, is your cash flow good? Do you have other adjustments you can make? Like we did in this plan. You know, we took a bit more RSP early. It allowed them to kind of flex out that TFSA a bit longer. Um, things like that. Maybe that will allow you to defer your OAS. Now, what I encourage every single one of you to do today, talk to your financial planner. If you're getting close to retirement, 
or close to the decision around CPP timing. So it could be at 860 you're on or old age security timing, 865 you're on. You need to sit down with your financial planner and go through this process with them. We do this with every one of our clients. We look at what makes the most sense. There's the financial side of it. Again, delaying OAS gave you more income, but do you have a cash flow issue? And what are the ways to kind of buffer that? Is it drawing down RSP a bit quicker to allow your, your TFSA to stay a bit bigger? Is it, no, I'm gonna take my CPP earlier. Is it gonna, I'm gonna take my old age security earlier. You need to run through these scenarios with your financial planner to see what makes the most sense for you. Again, if you don't have a financial planner, we'll put the link below, but you can find a CFP in your area. Again, with technology nowadays, you don't need to find the local CFP. You can find the best one for yourself. If you feel that our firm might be that, um, again, we'll put our link below as well. Thank you for joining us in this video. We'll see you in the next one.